I met a gypsy. I remember seeing, you know, just like this American dude that, yeah, like you literally reminded me of Cooper Webb. I was like, he's just this, he's just the definition of like the American badass guy that's just like, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to work harder than everybody. I'm going to, you know, like that, that sort of Navy SEAL competitive kind of mindset, you know? And, um, yeah, like, but to, I just didn't know the full backstory. Like, I knew you come from Moto and I knew, you know, I knew bits and pieces, but to know, like, the, and how short that time was to go from stepping on a bike to then having a factory contract, it's just that that's an insane, you know, journey to take. And what, what crossed over from like Moto or, you know, was it a mix of Moto and BMX? Like, what, what was it about? being a moto kid that will let you go so far so quick on a downhill bike or was there much that translated or do you just i don't know yeah i think there was a ton that translated i mean outside of just the work ethic and the experience and the race craft and all the competitiveness and all the things you learn i think direct skills why like wise from bmx um just the way a bicycle moves underneath you is very similar to a dirt bike but also different because of the weight and it's it's just a lot more um twitchy and different things and whatever and so kind of like knowing how to jump a bicycle turn a bicycle because you're standing all the time you're never Mm. like sitting down putting your foot out like a dirt bike you know there's a lot of like more skills where riding a downhill bike and a bmx bike are, are very similar in a lot of ways so learning how to like be smooth like time jumps like in bmx you don't have suspension so when you're jumping stuff like you got to be perfect um you know on your backside learning how to pump um, obstacles to generate speed and momentum. Um, that's something that I definitely brought over to downhill that I don't think a lot of dudes were doing the first few years. Like yeah. I was looking to find the backsides of everything to try to pump and generate speed. Um, and then for motocross, a lot of it was how momentum carries. Cause when I was racing, I was on eighties and then 125 two strokes. And so those things were all about opening up the track, you know, like, um, and my trainer, Mike Fedoro, shout out to him. Um, I learned a lot of my speed, honestly, from him and all the the years we spent working together in moto. Um, he was like a master of, of how to straighten out a track and, and make the turns as wide and open as possible so that you could just carry as much speed as possible because on the two stroke, like that's everything. You don't want to be like scrubbing all that speed and turns. It's all about opening the track up. Um, you know, letting the momentum carry and the line selection, um, ultimately. And so I brought a lot of that into downhill. Like I, I, I use the entire track when I can, like from the tape on the right to the tape on the left side of the track, like everything opens up. Um, we don't have a throttle, we just have downhill. So obviously, um, momentum is, is like King, like you, you can't just easily take a pedal and get your speed back. If you over break a corner or you have a line that tightens up too much or whatever, So a lot of that, that, uh, reading speed, you know, when things are going by you really fast, like downhill, slower speed than moto, but there's a lot more stuff to pay Mm. attention to with rocks and roots and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of, it feels like more like a motocross speed because there's just way more stuff that you're running over. So I think that perception of speed and line selection and how to like make momentum carry on a race course. I think that's all stuff that carried over from motocross as far as speed wise goes and and skills wise. So I think it was a little bit of both, you know, like those two BMX and motocross kind of was like the perfect combination for downhill. And and so when did you, uh, what changed for it to click for you to win? Because you got so close, I think, was it like, was it 2000, what year did you win the first World Cup, 11 or 10? Yeah, eleven. I almost won in ten. Um, yeah, so ten you at almost the last won, race of right? the year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I had that big crash um, in Italy. I think it was the last World Cup t- in two thousand ten. Like I was up on the time coming into the bottom split, and um, I had actually like dislocated my thumb and messed it up like a week or two prior at National Champ. So I would got to the bottom of the track. And was having a really hard time holding onto the bike and I landed off this big drop and my hand just like exploded straight off the bike. Like I just couldn't hold on anymore. And so I ended up losing that race, but I think I finished fourth overall in the world cup, um, title or whatever in 2010, I'd had a bunch of podiums. Um, I think for me, the difference was it took me a couple of years to a get the speed that the top couple guys had especially in certain conditions like if it was muddier or more technical 
um, if the track was dry and rough and wide, kind of like a moto track, I was very comfortable. But if it was wet and rooty, like I had never ridden anything like that. So I knew that was going to take me a couple of years to kind of figure out. Um, and then second, my fitness, like I was really strong upper body, like, but I did not have pedaling legs like those top dudes dude. So I remember like, even when I got 10th at Mount St. Anne, my first year, I remember telling somebody like, they were like, that's incredible. You got 10th, like so cool. And I was like, yeah, should have been a podium, but like, I'm not fit enough. Like I knew that I left a bunch of time on the track because I just wasn't strong enough to ride at my hundred percent from start to finish. Like I was having to ride at like 80% for half the track. Cause I just wasn't strong enough to maintain that level. Um, so that was a big part of it for me. I knew it was going to take a couple of years to kind of get my fitness where I needed it to be, to be able to ride a hundred percent the whole way down in a race run. Like those top couple guys were doing. Um, and I just needed to build my skills to be better on other tracks and stuff. So I think it just, um, it took a lot of things kind of coming together. Really, honestly, it wasn't one little thing. I started training with John Tomac at the end of 2010. Um, and I think he really brought a lot to my program. Like it stepped up a whole nother level as far as like the seriousness and structure of a program. Like I'd never been on a, a program that was so structured like it was when I was training with him and, and riding with him and Eli and being able to like push each other in the gym and on our bike rides and all that kind of stuff for those couple of years, like that definitely raised my game. And I think honestly elevated the sport a bit too, because I think at that time I was probably training harder than anybody else and, and had like, yeah, I was fully committed to my off season. Like I wasn't resting. Like I was, I was really getting down and making progress every month and and pushing forward and, and taking it serious. Like I was basically on like a factory moto program, but racing downhill, um, and so that, that really brought everything together for me. Like all the little weaknesses I had were just kind of getting less and less over the years be, until finally, like I was a very well-rounded, strong, kind of fast rider. And then I had my unique skills that were kind of able to shine, um, that I think other people didn't quite have at the time with how I looked at tracks and, and chose lines and all that kind of stuff coming from my other experiences. So it was really, uh, if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.